So this is one of the admission CTG. I see Dr. Anju is here or not? So uh, this is admission CTG. Patient has come with a mild tenseness of the abdomen and a reduced fetal movement. So Mukta, what you say to this CTG? Uh, this is okay. It is around 130 beta heart. It is okay or it is a little uh, problematical. Mukta, what is your interpretation? Ma'am, fetal heart, uh, baseline fetal heart is uh, between 130 to 140. But the short term variability is little less and we could not see any acceleration in this part. Yeah. So Good. for me, it's an equivocal CTG. It's uh, neither a non-reactive and nor a reactive one. So what will you, if you get such a CTG, milta hai, what will you say to your resident doctor, what do you want to do with this patient? Ka? She has been mm -hmm. admitted. You are seeing a little bit contraction as well in the monitoring. What do you wish to have further? You can have your uh, clinical attitude. You, you have to go for see the records, what is the positive finding in favor, whether it is having cord presentation, whether it is having oligopneumonia, whether it is having PIH or something like that. Any risk factor, you have to trace it out. Then you correlate. So thank yes. you very much, Sanjay, for it. Uh, actually, sometimes uh, we in the night, what I, I'm running like in the night at 12 noon, patient has come, she's mild pain, you want to see the personally. But you can see the tracing on WhatsApp, it is the artificial intelligence. And you see this patient requires observation. So next slide, please, Arun, next slide. So as Mukta says, it is a baseline variability is less. And there has been a two things, there has been the Two FHS, there is gaps. We say, we are not really having any tracing, and that is important that the sister or the para, the resident doctor has done well. There has been loss of contact, or sometimes a cord around the neck with the compression, we sometimes get the that loss of gap. So, like Sanjay says, we have to see whether this patient is already having IUGR or oligohydromnus in ultrasound, what is the cord position. And in these situations, we have to be extra careful. It is better that we extend the monitoring for another 60 minutes that what is happening, it is not the fetal sleep pattern. And if there is persistent non-reactive and repeated gaps in CTG, sometimes it is we may omit the fetal movement. That's why we are having gap. But whenever there is a gap, we should be a little careful about it. So these patients should have the continuous CTG. If we have this thing on admission CTG, and if the patient is having another risk factor like hypertension, IUGR, oligo, we can have the low threshold of the cesarean section. Next, next, next is uh, CG. So this I same wonder. patient, what happened? She was observed for four hours in labor. She get uterine contraction, but at six centimeter, we found the thick meconium stain like a cesarean was done. One minute Fgar score was five, and baby needed an ICU care. So this simple admission CTG actually gave rise to the alertness of all staff. And we were particularly see that this was the meconium stain and could do the cesarean section or deliver the baby in time. So this is the.